Welcome, welcome back to Artistic License. Yes, we were doing two episodes of Artistic License today. Garnet, you did not miss. Well, you missed Final Fantasy X. We beat the Maga Sisters and we beat uh, Dark Anima. So we still have Dark Bahamut and Dark Yojimbo to go. But we're going to play a different game for a little bit. We're going to do, we're gonna do like a little mini episode. Okay, we're going to do like a mini episode. Uh, this is super fun. Okay, I cannot stop playing this game. And um, it's like ridiculous and nerdy. But, uh, but, you know, if you're still here after a few hours, then I know you love me. So, uh, so you want to see this ridiculous, nerdy thing. Okay, here we go, you guys. It is called Half-Earth Socialism, and you get to run a whole planet. It is so fun and ridiculous, okay? And you can play too. It's a browser game. So let me just, let me just tell, show you. Okay, it's right here. It's just, it's this website. It's totally free. It's like super fun. <laughs> okay. Let me show you this game. This is ridiculous. Lollisaurus, welcome in, welcome in. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, by the way, because we do have a, a few new people in here that don't watch a lot of my streams. I'm a variety streamer. We stream on Saturdays and on Sundays starting at noon Eastern time. Um, Sundays is my stream by myself. So we are playing, but today we're playing some Half-Earth Socialism. Uh, I think I changed, I changed the category properly. So I think we're good. Yes. This pre-stream ad is more Genshin Impact than I've ever seen before. Oh, no. Sorry you're stuck in an ad, friend. Okay, here we go, you guys. It has the S word. I don't know if I'm going to like it. Blue, it's okay. It's okay. I promise. I promise you'll like it. I mean, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> Garnet, I'm good. I'm good. I'm about to show you guys, like, the nerdiest strategy game in the world. So <laughs> I'm good. Okay, we're going to do a new game. Um... And there's a lot of text, so we're going to read. We're going to read. Okay, so here we go. In 2022, a socialist revolution swept the globe. The regions of the world united to establish Geoplant, a global planning authority. Geoplant was tasked with undoing the myriad harms that centuries of capitalism had unleashed on the planet and its people. You have been elected as Geoplant's first lead planter. It's your duty to bring warming below one degree Celsius, the extinction rate below 20, and emissions below zero while there's still time. You must do so without letting people's contentedness dip below zero. Otherwise, they will vote you out of office, and you must do so without letting your political capital dip below zero. Otherwise, your adversaries may take the opportunity to replace you. It's a sunny day in Havana where the first planning session will take place. Okay. Is it based? I think it's based. It's like a high school model UN in the game. Kind of. <laughs> it kind of is, Garnet. Um, I have been playing on my other computer on my laptop, so it, this might, it might actually like walk us through the tutorial. Let's find out. All right, so people are content. Biodiversity is suffering. The warm world is still warming. Parliament is ready to work with you. You have 60 years left in your tenure. Okay. Um, welcome to Geoplants Plants Planning Application. You can call me Glossy. Okay, it is going to try to do the tutorial, but we're not going to do that. We're going to get straight to it. I'm going to teach you guys how to play this game. Good luck. Thank you, Glossy. This is way better than Model UN speak as the Model UN graduate. Yeah, I did Model UN too, friend. <laughs> I did Model UN too, friend. Okay, so here we go. Now, the important thing really to win is to kind of balance out your production, all right? So you can like move these around to change your production. Okay. So like, for example, let's see if we can get rid of petroleum power generation. So I'm going to slide this down to take it away and I'm going to put it in um, wind instead. Okay. And then it says at the bottom, these changes will take one planning cycle to take effect and the outputs production will decrease emissions by 3%. So it's all green, no red. Okay. It's all green, no red. So we're good. Hello, Pokemon electric symbol. Yes, they clearly use Pokemon's electric symbol there and then kind of went from there. <laughs> uh, yes, where's the part where I plan a revolution? Well, Garnet, the revolution has already happened and we're trying to not let another revolution happen because we're in power now. Yes. Balance sounds just like socialism, right? Gross. Um, there are still capitalists in this game. I will show you guys in just a moment. So yeah, so we can do we can do this. I don't want to mess with this too, too much, I don't think, but we want to keep it all green down here. So like, let's see if we remove a few points of coal and put that into wind um, if we still stay in the green. Okay, yeah, so decrease emissions by 8%. So this is pretty good. Now we can't get rid of coal entirely quite yet, um, but we got rid of pet petroleum, right, which is super helpful. So yeah, so 
but let's look at fuel. So we've got all of our different fuels here. We're doing a lot of petroleum fuel. Um, I don't think I want to mess with this too much because we're going to unlock green hydrogen later. So I think we're going to leave that alone. Also, I'm going to leave crops alone for now. And then I'm going to leave this alone for now. Okay. Because these will change up like how much energy you're using and stuff. So we're going to leave that alone for now. Can we send the capitalist to the gallows? No, we have to work. We have to uh, to get along. Okay. Blue, this, this, is, this game is called put on your get along pants. This game is called put on your get along pants. Okay. I'll show you guys since you're asking so much. So here's the government. So we've got the Malthusians. Um, they want to decrease the population. Okay. You can see population projects are substantially cheaper if you ally with them. The utopians limits production and restoration projects are cheaper if you ally with them they they're like very idealistic the consumerists okay the contentedness of the upper middle and upper income regions recovers more quickly okay consumerists so they're kind of like capitalist sort of um they're not super capitalist they're like they're capitalist light we've got fanonists um the contentedness of lower and lower middle lower middle income regions recovers more quickly okay so these guys are like um they want to help restore the third world and things like that. Ecofeminists, these guys are super OP, okay? Super OP. Food agriculture and production projects are cheaper. Um, authoritarians, you won't lose if contentedness dips below zero. These guys um, are basically like rule with an iron fist. Accelerationists, these are the super capitalists, okay? These are the, the super ultra capitalists. Research points cost um, less, you know, political capital. Environmentalist restoration projects are substantially cheaper and the animal, animal liberationist food projects are much cheaper, okay? So that's the government. Um, you can see your stats here. I like honestly, truly never look at this. Um, but this is how you actually play. You add cards. All right. You add cards. You add cards. So let's look at infrastructure. A lot of these are super important. So we're going to get started on a few of these that are really super important. Okay. Indigenous sovereignty. That's helpful. And I like to put just like a little bit, just like one point in a lot of these. Hey, thank you so much for the follow. We have anonymous followers on here, but um, if you would like me to thank you by name, then you're welcome to speak up that you followed, and I'll be happy to do that. Okay, so we've got indigenous sovereignty. I like to do um, very early energy conservation campaign. We'd like to do that early. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I should do early. I'm trying to remember like, oh yeah, battery storage network. Let's do that early. And then in the research, there's a couple of these that are pretty important. Cellular meat. This is how we're going to fix the um, agriculture situation, the livestock situation with cellular meat, okay? Floating wind turbines, we definitely need those. We need green hydrogen, okay? Imagine if this is how shit gets done, just a bunch of, bunch of peeps playing with cards. Garnet, you think it's more complicated than that in real life. I can't believe it. It's your friend, Lisa One. Hey, Lisa One, thank you so much for following. I appreciate you so much. Did you come because I posted in, in, the, in the Barber Monger that I was playing this? I knew some mongers would like it. <laughs> oh, I see there, y'all are responding. Uh, find a way to grow tube stick. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. What else do we want to do during round one? What else do we want to do? Let's do, yeah, we can't do this yet. The BECCS, that's helpful, but we can't do it yet. Uh, cause we don't, you know, we don't have enough cooperation. We don't have in the parliament. I haven't played yet and I want to see what it's like. It's super fun. It's super nerdy. Um, I absolutely love it. Okay, what else do we want to do soon? Okay, if you want to go to space, you have to start with, you have to start this. Okay, um, you don't need to do the policies at the beginning. I'll do those in a couple of turns, but this is very helpful for keeping people happy. You can do a lot of fun stuff. You can do a lot of fun stuff, but we're actually going to focus on infrastructure and research. So let's do it. Let's do it like this. Uh, some of these, especially that take a long time. Let's go ahead and put some points in these. Uh, let's see. Ooh, yeah, let's do direct air capture. Let's expand public transit. We want that. Um, we want more recycling. Okay, passive building mandate retrofit. Yeah, that's fine. We can get started on that. Let's do, and let's do wooden skyscrapers. So we still have a decent amount of political capital. We still have 52 political capital, but I don't want to spend too, too much because not a lot's going to get done in this first round because you only, this first round only goes for three years. Okay. So we're just going to hit ready at this point. I think this is okay. Can you really build skyscrapers out of wood? I have no idea, Lolly, but in this, in this game, you can. 
Um, and you'll get these little events, and these events are kind of sort of randomized, um, but they're all based on things. So you can click here to see the factors behind the event. So this event is influenced by global temperature anomaly. So I, we still have high temperatures, of course, because it's only round one. So uh, this event can potentially pop up if you have high temperatures. Once in a decade, heavy rains have now become commonplace, leading to overflowing rivers capable of destroying hundreds of homes. If you can do anything to lower the temperatures, we should see fewer of these events. We get to the part where this game where you get nuked out of orbit for thinking people are wishing up in the near future. <laughs> Round one global. Well, it's 2022, so global warming's already happening. Um, yeah, so wildfires. Wildfires are growing in frequency and severity. You can see, again, like this is just because our temperature is high. It's not because we've done anything wrong at this point. We have to lower temperatures quickly and introduce natural solutions to manage this problem. Yes, I agree. Okay. So you can see total change, I've got plus 39 political capital. You always want to, at the end of every round, have plus political capital. And you get that by basically making sure you don't fuck up too bad here. So our extinction rates are still pretty bad, so we got a negative five here. Temperature is still pretty bad, so we got a negative six here. But we've still we've got good contentedness, and we lowered emissions quite a bit by those changes that we made. So we've got plus 25 here. Um, and then this is just like a little random, sort of randomized bonus. Okay. And then you can see here the disasters that we had. So we had flooding in Central Asia and Eastern Africa, and we had wildfires in Eastern Africa and Western Africa, poor Eastern Africa. Okay, second planning session. People are unhappy, biodiversity suffering. The world is still warming. Parliament is ready to work with you. Fabulous. Takes place in Arizona. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's take a peek at our production. Let's take a peek at our production. So um, we got rid of petroleum. I wonder, can we get rid of hydropower. If we get rid of that and we pump it into solar instead, what happens? So we get decreased water use by 27%. So that's pretty good. We like that. Okay. What if we get rid of some coal and we put that over in wind? Okay. So even better. Can we keep going? Okay, so that's still all green, pretty good. Fuel. We don't have our green hydrogen yet, so we're not gonna mess with that. We're not gonna mess with that. Vertical farming is nice, but it uses so much energy that it, I've never found it a, a good way to utilize that. Okay, I can't get over how many Pokemon symbols they're using. Makes me wanna pull up Pokewilds. <laughs> ah, yes, I totally agree, Scrub. <laughs> okay. Scrub, you totally should. You totally should try streaming again. I mean, your streams were good. Like, I, w I remember watching them when you were streaming kind of regularly. I enjoyed them. I know you don't have, like, a, a camera or anything, but, like, you were still pretty entertaining. Like, even without it. You know what I mean? So, like, that says a lot. I recommend growing all of our options. Oh, oh, okay. They're talking about the temperatures. Yes, I know, friend. I know. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> okay so you can see these have seven years left there it's gonna be two more rounds because the first round is three years but after that the rounds are five years so let's see what we've got here so we've got like a point in a lot of stuff i'm gonna put a point in our other and all the other infrastructure things just to kind of get them all started and i found that this is a really good way to win this game um is just do a little bit of everything. And I kind of I kind of get the sense that this is how the game wants you to play. So I kind of think that just like, like that's kind of the thesis of this game is like, if we want to save the earth and humanity, we kind of have to do a little bit of everything. So let's see if I can, if this plays out, because there is some randomization in this game. Okay, so here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go to policies. Our contentedness is not so good. It's not so good. So here's a good way to fix that. There's all of these things called curriculums. You can see like acceleration is curriculum, animal liberation is curriculum, and they unlock fun things. I'm doing this fun things. Loli, it is there for you to play. Don't say sorry for that. Scrub, become a VIP. No problem, friend. I will make you a VIP. Um, why don't we do why don't we do this? Let me open up a tab. Let me fix that for you right now, friend. Let's make, let's, uh, let's make you a VIP. Yeah, the Pokemon, the Pokemon chat game is really fun. Okay, let's see. I need to go to my dashboard. 
Yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, let's see. Where's my VIP settings? Add a new VIP. There you are. VIP save. All right, friend. You're a VIP now. Enjoy your little gem. Okay, so these curriculums, um, basically, people really like them. So we're going to do all of them, okay? And I know that doesn't make sense. Like accelerationists and animal liberationists, and we're going to do, we're going to do all of them? Yes, we're going to do all of them, except for the Malthusians, because they're actually evil. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Malthusians are actually fucking evil. Do you see what there's unlocks? It unlocks stop food aid and militarized conservation. Gross. Um, so yeah, we're going to do all of these curriculums. Okay, and we're going to do universal family planning. Okay. Um, and that's, we have pretty low political capital now. So now we're going to cross our fingers that I didn't just royally fuck up everything. Losing this game is pretty easy. I lost a lot before I figured out how things worked with your, um, the way the fuel works. You want one too? Well, Blue, if you do the redeem, I will be more than happy to make you a VIP friend. Yeah, you're super fancy now, Scrub. <laughs> I know how to save humanity, but first I need a time machine. How is universal family planning not Malthusian? It is. It is. But you don't have to do the Malthusian curriculum to unlock it. But after we do the universal family planning, I'll show you like the stuff that that unlocks. And I don't do any of that stuff because it's, it's like evil. <laughs> evil in your eyes. Yes, evil in my eyes, blue. <laughs> um, I'm getting reports of a novel mosquito-borne disease spreading quickly. Okay, so this is happening because biodiversity pressures and also because of the habitability of regions because we had like some wildfires and floods and stuff um they've always been troublesome parasites malaria kills hundreds of thousands of people per year but in many parts of the world they weren't considered more than a nuisance now they're much more dangerous warmer temperatures have been a boon for mosquito populations, so it was only a matter of time before this happened okay the reduced deforestation has helped avoid a great deal of carbon emissions not to mention that the recognition of sovereignty is long overdue. Okay, so this is Central Africa um, is increased to lower middle. Okay, we've got Dust Bowl, and this is because of industrial crop ag agriculture and industrial livestock agriculture. So if you lower those, you might not get this. I heard there were storms like this in my great-grandfather's time. The soil is just blown away because they've ruined the land. Industrial agriculture gives us high yields, but it's like mining the soil. Abs about near nearly half of global farmland is degraded and we're still losing topsoil every year as i see it we have two options either expand our agriculture lands at the expense of the wilderness or try other kinds of farming yeah, this game is super intense <sighs> i read new paper new world i know all about malthusianism now right <laughs> uh isn't that the one that's like a, a gram is better than a dam is that the saying from that one is that the one with soma or is that 1984 uh, planner, your bias towards technology and industry is putting the world and yourself on a dangerous path. The Earth is calling for our aid, so we, the Earth Liberation Front, have returned. You better abandon this cozy relationship with the accelerationists, so else we'll have to take drastic action to protect the planet. They say this whether you are actually cozy with the accelerationists or not. It's very annoying. Like, bro, I'm trying to save all the people and everything. Mountain gorilla declared extinct. I hate when this happens. It happens most of the time for me. This is a betrayal to our primate family, a wound that can never be healed. Sorry, bro. Sorry. Hate it too. Okay, here's our curriculums. Our children will become the Prometheans of tomorrow. Yay. The new curriculum instills children with a sense of compassion for all human and non-human animals. Consumerist. The education is about training people for the jobs that pay well. These jobs might not be fun, but you can afford that fancy electric car or trip to Cuba or the beach. We're not plan the planning bureau. The students have organized a local group to implement multistrata agroforestry. Will you support them? Sure. Multistrata agroforestry is a system of various types of crops to benefit each other, while also being a place where people of different ages and professions can work together. The ecofeminists are so OP. Like, I'll show you what theirs unlocks. It's like super OP. There's no downsides. There's no downsides in the game. The ecological education initiative is going great. People are learning about their local ecology and finding better ways of interacting and relating to the life around them. It's vital for each generation to discover its mission and to fight for it. My recycling 
posters are inspired by Neurath's, I don't know how to say that, um, isotopes. Where would we be today without him? What a relief that we finally have access to basic reproductive health care. <laughs> um, I can't believe it took literally a revolution for it to happen. And see, this unlocks the one-child policy and the cap-and-trade program for children. I never do those. I never do those. They're gross. Okay, plus 38. So we're still doing really good. We're still doing really good. Our extinction rate's not so good, but contentedness went way up, you saw. Went way up. And um, temperatures are going down. Or temperatures are temperatures are still going up, but not by much. Yeah, it's it's gross. <laughs> Okay, so the people are content, biodiversity is suffering, the world's still warming, Parliament's ready to work with you, 52 years left. Feels like we have a similar vision for the world. Oh, thank you. So we're going to be allied with the utopians now. My party will commit its seats to our shared vision and join your coalition. Before I go, let me leave you a favorite quote from William Morris. Go back again. Now that you have seen us and your outward eyes have learned, in spite of the infallible maxims of your day, there is yet a time of rest in store for the world when mastery has changed into fellowship. I look forward to working together. The utopian is now an ally. Limits, protection, and restoration projects are cheaper. Yay. Have you been to our Havana offices? Well, the parts of the world that have joined the half-Earth socialist bloc all provide data technical expertise and proposals to the Central Planning Bureau in Cuba. Havana has the most experience with planning, decarbonization, and organic agriculture, so I guess it made sense to put the Bureau there. I have no idea if it's true or if that's just like the game maker's opinion, by the way. So if anybody knows, I would be really curious. Um, what Cuba is doing differently than everybody else. Oh, if it isn't just me, thousands of people work there from all over the world. We have supercomputers to make the series of global plans stimulating snapshots of the future, say five detailed blueprints of the planets five years out, 10 for the coming decade, and a couple dozen for the next quarter century. Okay. Ah, uh, thank you, Garnet. Thank you, Garnet. I could never be president though. Fuck that. <laughs> can I be in this game? Yes, you can play it. I'll show you. Here we go. Look. It's just online. It's just on, on a website. Is the U is the U.S. party of the so party of the socialist bloc? Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, you seem like someone who loves nature. You also seem like someone who still recognizes that we're not trying to drive ourselves into extinction just to save it. It's all about harmony. We've got to find a way to live harmoniously with nature. Anyway, my party is joining your coalition since we feel the same way. The environmentalist is now an ally. Restoration projects are substantially cheaper. Okay, so if we go to the government, you can see like these guys are lit up that I'm allied with. Okay, so I share with them. So I've got a lot of good support and it unlocks things and makes the game easier when you have that support. Okay, let's look at our production. We haven't unlocked our cellular meat yet. Okay, but um, let's see if we can fuck with this a little bit more. Let's see, can we get rid of nuclear? What if we do this and we get get this. Okay, decrease emissions by 11. So we're going to keep natural gas for now. How much longer for um, let's see, green hydrogen? How much longer? Two years left, so it will go next turn. And cellular meat will also trigger next turn. So that's fantastic. Okay, let's look. Okay, we've got advances in ecosystem modeling unlocked now. Fantastic. Let's see what else we have. Uh, drought resistant crops. We definitely want that. Eco socialist video game. This makes people happy, so you should always do this. Um, we've got two years left on the floating wind turbines, too. Fantastic. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do high density batteries. Let's do low methane cattle fodder. Um, let's do perennial cereals. I also always love to reintroduce apex predators. I think that's great. Let's do phalange theory. Okay. Policies. So let me show you what we can do now. We can do this remove fetters of the, on the forces of production because we did the Fanonist curriculum. One child policy. This is unlocked by doing the um, uh, the birth control. Meatless Mondays. I always do this. Okay. Also, masculinity detox. This one is really super OP. Okay. Really super OP. So we always do this too. Uh, and this one makes people happy. This um, gadgets, fast fashion, endless TV. We did that. We unlocked that from doing the consumerist. Okay. Flexitarian. This one is really OP too. Plus 20 resource points and increased contentedness by one. Amazing. Okay. So we only have five left. So, oh, and here's the cap and trade program for children. Like the fuck. Um, so you can do all this, but, uh, but we're running low on capital. So I think we have to, we have to just go. Okay. Hopefully we didn't fuck it up and lose everything.
Pollinator decline. Oh, no. Pollinator populations are declining to dangerously low levels. Crop yields have been a bit lower than expected. This might be why. The use of pesticides likely contributes to colony collapse disorder. Bees may be small, but they're a crucial part of modern farming. Okay, I only have five political capital, so I'm a little bit nervous I fucked it all up, but we're going to find out. Research and development improves electrolysis efficiency and in built infrastructure. Hydrogen fuel can now be produced and transported on mass scale without emissions. We figured out enough of the technical hurdles to start producing cellular meat on a larger scale. It just doesn't hit the same way as real meat. I just hope the eco-freaks don't try to ban cows next. The new global recycling program has helped keep plastic out of the ocean as well as other ecosystems. It also made the world a bit nicer to live in for humans. The elderly folks in my town love hanging around the drop-off facilities, making sure people put the correct recyclables in the right bin. So far, we've seen a modest decrease in temperatures. I don't know for how long it will last, though. Hempcrete locked in a fair amount of carbon, but there's a few applications where it can't compete with conventional concrete. We'll use it where we can, but we won't entirely replace old-fashioned concrete. We've worked out several of the technical issues that made floating wind turbines difficult, so this is going to be helpful for our energy grid. They still require a bit of maintenance and repair, but it's good to have more options for energy production. Whoa, I just had a vision. Did you see it too? It was so detailed. Was it a message from beyond the stars? A recent study compared siblings receiving, conceived before and after nearby oil spills and found that nearby oil spills doubled neonatal mortality rate. Oh, that's a shame. So this happened because, oh, because we're still, because we're still using petroleum. Yes, I know. Not only that, they found that the pollution is placing communities at heightened risk of kidney damage as well as diseases such as cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. If we keep up the oil production, more and more communities are going to have to face this danger. Don't worry, we're getting rid of it very, very soon. I promise. If I didn't just totally fuck up and destroy this turn, we're getting rid of it. We've identified several leaks in the nuclear storage sites. Oh, it's because we're still using nuclear power. We're dealing with it now, but the leaks have contaminated the subsurface and are threatening nearby water resources. It should be resolved soon, but I'm sure it will shake people's confidence in our nuclear program. Understood. Okay, severe hurricane intro. Models have long predicted that warming will increase hurricane strength. We ought to do whatever we can to bring down the temperatures and reduce the risk. Don't worry, we are. We are. It just takes time, friend. Oh, people are really, really sad, it looked like. Sewage treatment plants. Sewage treatment plants are unglamorous, but so vital in improving the quality of life for people and animals. This game is not only fun, but I learned learned about the uh, I learned all about the interdependence between economy and biosphere. One day I want to become a planetary planner just like you. Old scraps are transformed through practices of care and attention into nutrient-rich new soil. What a great metaphor for how we can survive this era. Desalination brine is getting pumped back into the ocean. Coastal species are not equipped to adjust to the immediate change in salinity caused by the release of brine in the area, and desalination takes up a lot of power. At least now we can irrigate our crops again. Meatless Mondays, I found it surprisingly easy to cut meat out of my diet once a week. There are certain meals that feature meat that are important to me and I would hate to lose them, but cutting it out every once in a while feels reasonable to me. This feels like a slippery slope. <laughs> Don't worry, consumerist, it is. <laughs> We're all soy boys now. <laughs> I love the prompt for this one. It cracks me up. Nothing bad happens. They're just mad that they're soy boys. <laughs> all right. Bye, Scrub. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out today. We've been able to collect much more dynamic data on how the Earth is changing after establishing new kinds of studies. Okay. Yes, it worked out the way I wanted it to. We are basically fucking gods now. Look at this. Plus 199 because all of this stuff finished, and I'm doing so much better on emissions. Okay. So we're, we're well on our way. Fourth planning session. The people are happy. Biodiversity is suffering. The world is still warming. Parliament trusts you completely. You're killing me with these plans. I wanted change, but this is ridiculous. My life has only gotten worse. I almost missed the days before the revolution. I won't let you drag me down with you. The consumerist is now a nemesis. All right, bye, Koneko. Have fun. Did you know that Miyatake? I don't know how, to know how you say that. Farmers are a vital part of local food chains. It's almost as if the whole economy has come out and burnt ruins in which the mushrooms grow. You seem like someone who understands this, so my party is willing to join your coalition. Would you be interested in foraging for mushrooms? Yes, it's my life's passion. <laughs> we welcome you. They're so cringe. Okay, so, okay. I will say something about this game, too. Um, identity is not a part of it, in, except for political affiliation. So there is no, like gender, race, sexuality, like none of that exists in this game. The only difference between people is their political ideology and their economic class, right? So the eco-feminists are like super OP, but like let's imagine these guys in the real world. In the real world, 
this party is full of turfs. Like, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. In the game mechanics, they are awesome. Okay. And they are OP. But in real life, this party is full of turfs. Like, let's just be real. They are. Oh, no, the authoritarians don't like me now either. You're digging your own grave. Your plans mean nothing if you let people's ignorance and impulsiveness run loose. Without force, we'll never save the planet. It's for the best. The authoritarians are now a nemesis. Okay, that's fine. Um, I don't know. I've always said yes. Like, I've never told the ecofeminists no. Like, they're so OP. I'm fo- I followed your planning for some time now, and I see you have interest in the world at heart. Yes, I do. And by world, I mean the whole world and not just the wealthy re- regions like some mean with that term. My party is happy to join your coalition. I hope that together we can undo at least some part of the centuries of injustices. The fanniness is now an ally. The contentedness of the lower middle classes will recover more quickly. Okay, fabulous. Let's look at our production. Um, the the ecofeminists, you have an option where you where I guess you're refusing. I don't know. I always tell them yes, I love mushrooms. Okay, we're gonna try to get rid of this with of all of this stuff. Okay, of all the stuff we still have, and we're gonna do floating wind turbines. These are awesome. National parks are beautiful, but are taking up a lot of land these days. We'll have much less land for food, especially livestock, if you're... Yeah, okay, I understand. Okay, we're going to try to get rid of the terrestrial wind powder power. Yeah, it is kind of um, more utopian. Okay, here we go. If we put it all into floating wind turbines, what happens? Decrease emissions by 15%. Fabulous. Okay, and we've got green hydrogen now. So go away coal, go away biofuels... Um, let's put both of those into green hydrogen. Okay, we're increasing our energy use quite a bit. So here's what we're going to do. We got a balance, okay? You have to have balance. So let's see. Increase energy use. <laughs> Maybe we put some back into biofuels. Let's see, what about blue hydrogen? We don't like that. Mm, I think we cannot get rid of petroleum yet. We can do a little more green hydrogen than that. What if we get rid of the biofuels to blue hydrogen? That increases energy use by quite a lot. Can we handle it? go to our livestock now that we've got cellular meat we may be okay oh my gosh slide over <laughs> oh garnet it. it's really fun like i i'm like super addicted okay so we're going cellular meat okay we're gonna leave the crops alone okay i have so much political capital i think this is gonna be okay all right we definitely want to do champagne socialism because we need the people to be happy. We're going to do flexitarian. Um, we definitely want to do this. Okay, we want to keep the people happy. We want to keep the people happy. Do this. This increases world contentedness. Um, I told them it was a slippery slope. Yes, we're doing vegetarian. Okay. Y- you can do it. It did take me a while to learn it. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it took... It took a while. Um, it was not an easy game for me. Oh, the benefits of rewielding reduces the likelihood of more zoonotic disease. Well, the emergence of zoonotic disease is closely related to ecological disturbances. Clearings of otherwise undisturbed land to make room for things like industrial farming opens up opportunities for the transmission of pathogens from animals to humans. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we definitely want to get that going. Esperanto. Yes, we can do that. It increases world contentedness, so we want that. Let's do the food waste campaign. Let's do the green. Oh, we're already doing green roofs. Multi-strata agroforestry. Yes, we want that. We want all of this stuff. 
We want all of this stuff. Reconcile town and country, yes. Regenerative agriculture, yes. Yes, we want all of it. We want all of it. Now, it's really hard to get the space elevator in Space Colony without just dumping everything into there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Loli, this game is kind of broken that it lets you do that. It lets you do stuff like that. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, I did not, I did not do that. Undo that. Hello. I just wanted one point. Okay, let's look at our research. I think we're doing basically everything in here that's worth doing. I guess we can, we can put some into that. We can put a point into that. A point into that. We're just going to put a point into everything, basically. And hope that I didn't mess up in regards to how we've got our um, fuel and stuff set up. Go to space, yes. <laughs> the one place that hasn't been tainted by capitalism. Space! <laughs> uh, okay. All right, we're going to save up some of our political capital. Let's just go. Because I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Okay, wild lawns. My neighbors and I got rid of our lawns and encouraged native grasses to grow instead. Beautiful. These changes have brought a wealth of wildlife into our cities like voles, shrews, and lupine. Okay, some people are up unhappy, I see. This level of land protection is great. A good start. But quite a lot of land of, is still left exposed. Maybe we ought to consider stepping it up a bit. I'm happy that there's more outdoors for me to hike in and enjoy. The first DAC installations are up and running and sucking carbon out of the air. It's not a huge amount, though, and it needs a lot of energy. You can expand the DAC capacity in the planning tool if you want. We've seen a modest CO2 emissions reduction by adapting lower impact production processes. The new battery network will help a lot with large-scale electrification and improving reliability. Significant amounts of carbon were locked into human structures, but the increase in logging put a serious strain on the forest ecosystems. Animal husbandry takes up far too much room. Hard trade-offs must be made. It's true. Okay. Oh, no, we got forests infested. Climate change has enabled boring insects and other tree parasites to expand their range. The trees look alive, but they're dying. This means more fire and carbon emissions. Oh, no. No. Okay. Oh, yes, we've got the wetlands protected. I think it's a great shame that eels and frogs can't get the same attention as polar bears and penguins. Our slimy friends should be much happier now, along with geese, deer, and all the life in and around those wetlands. Oh no, we've got ash dye back. A fungus has been spreading across Europe, killing 80% of ash trees. This has been catastrophic impact since ash trees are a keystone species. Insects, lichen, mollusks, and birds all rely on them. The pathogen was able to spread rapidly due to industrialization of the nursery trade in Europe. Taking plants from their native habitat and packing them in large quantities for container shipping is a recipe for globalization and plant disease. Aww. More wolves, lions, cougars, and other large predators mean more livestock have been attacked. Yeah, but I always release, increase the apex predators. <laughs> Biochar is doing wonders for my fields. Good to know that soil can hold carbon for centuries. While algae additives reduce eccentric methane emissions from cattle farming, the effect was limited to the free lot stage. Okay, that's fine. Oh, Southern Africa is now upper middle. Oh, no, we've got brownouts. We're having a really hard time keeping the power flowing. There's not enough reliable power to go around. You ought to figure out some way to bring more stability, maybe changing where our power is from, or reducing energy consumption, or increasing battery network. Whatever it is, do it fast. Don't worry, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Yeah, we got we got brownouts. I get brownouts around here a lot when I play this game, and I can still win, so I think we're going to be okay. Batteries are a tricky thing. They're heavy and material intensive. But we figured out a few ways to make them more economical and lighter, too. That means we can use batteries in a lot of places where we couldn't before. Did you know that green roofs can reflect up to 80% of solar energy hitting it back into space? I've noticed that my apartment's temperature is much more consistent now. My kids stop complaining as much, at least. And it's nice to have an additional green space to enjoy. I love riding my bike, but I almost never did it because I was so afraid of being hit by a car. Now that the bike paths have improved, it's much safer and more pleasant. Yes, I always try to do this, too. And now with walkable cities, how walkable cities have become, I don't even need to take my bike half the time. Champagne socialism. I know a guy who makes these beautiful wines. No sulfates, all natural. We should go see him in the vineyard sometime. No problem, citizen. The idea has gained popularity amongst my peers, but it's a slippery slope. Don't worry, friend. Don't worry, friend. I, I know it's a slippery slope. I'm doing it on purpose. 
I love watching old shows that I've already seen dozens of times. Something about it makes me feel comfortable, comforted by the nostalgia. Me too, citizen. <laughs> Walkable City is a true pipe dream. I know, right? In this game, it's just a card. It's just a, you can just do it. You can just click it and it just happens. It's nice to have a resource directed towards our countries uh, for once. Will it ever match the wealth that was stolen from us? Maybe not, but this is a gesture of good faith at least. Malthusians, you do realize that not everyone can enjoy a high standard of living. That's not true, Malthusians. In this game, you can. I don't think the planet can sustain it. I struggled a bit with shifting to a vegetarian diet, but there's been such an explosion of creative vegetarian recipes and techniques that I haven't found myself missing meat. And I can still enjoy some milk and cheese, which has also made the transition easier. Okay, so plus 395, we're basically fucking gods, okay? We're basically gods at this point, so it was all worth it. Okay. Uh Uh-oh, looks like there's some production shortages. You may need to change your production mixes to compensate for resource limitations. Okay, and so you can... Oh, I feel like you're truly interested in non-human life at heart. Not many feel the same way. My party will join your coalition. Non-humans will finally have a voice in government. Ah, thank you, animal liberationists. Okay, yeah, you can click on here and you can see there's multiple production shortages, fuel and electricity and animal calories. Okay. Um, let's see. What are we going to do? I don't think I'm going to do anything, actually. I don't think I'm going to mess with this at all. I don't think I'm going to mess with this at all. I think I'm going to mess with this. Okay, what have we got? We're still building a little bit of everything. Okay. Electric arc furnaces. I mean, a lot of this stuff, perennial cereals, that's going to help, and it'll be done in two years. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Ah, we need this. We've got so much capital. We're just going to see if we can get this finished in the next cycle. Ten years left? Okay. Carbon capture. We can do more of this. Is there anything we're not doing? Anything we're not doing in here? Or rotational grazing. We can do this too. It doesn't do anything. It's funny. It's funny. Uh, Let's see. We're doing, we're doing everything in here. What about policies? Okay. All right. We're going to abolish prisons. We're going to abolish zoos. We're going to ban a bunch of shit. All right. I got so much political capital. Time to spend it. Okay. Get out of here, high seas fishing. Bring your cats inside. Okay. Goodbye, crypto. All right. Energy quotas. Yes. Factory farming reform. Yes. You know what? You said we can't sustain it. Everyone can't have it. Luxury for all. Okay. Luxury for all. We can just do that. Um, what, we, what else are we going to do? Okay, this one. I don't know how you say that, but I do it. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, that's 55 points. We don't have to go vegan. We don't have to go vegan. But we do need to protect the marine areas. All right. We're going to restrict air travel. All right. Let's see. What else? What else are we going to do? Okay. No, we're going to deep sea mining. No. All right. We spend our political capital. Just take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, this is all fine. This is all fine. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Upper middle for Southeastern Asia. A, the aurochs went extinct in 1627, but it's proven possible to backbreed cattle and recover lost traits such as longer legs and horns. We call this breed Tauros because they're not true aurochs, but pretty close. They will fill an important ecological niche in rewilding programs. Fantastic. We have wild cows again. We have wild cows again, you guys. All right. We've still got, got to combust things for energy. This is at least an improvement. So many places are gradually becoming themselves again after decades of exploitation and neglect. It's a beautiful sight to behold. Okay, Central America is now upper middle. Caribbean is now high. Uh, We're really struggling to produce enough food to feed everyone. Whether it's too hot or there's too much water, it's not enough or whatever else is going on. You've got to do something about it. All right, farmer, I understand. I understand. But I did give you like all those TVs and stuff. So droughts aren't nearly as devastating as they once were thanks to these new varieties. They're especially welcome in regions normally at high risk for water shortages. Glad I can rest a bit easier now. I think we've worked out the last kinks that prevented us from scaling up BECCS. Looks like I should start clearing some land. We're going to need it for all those new tree replantations. 
I love the new perennials. Saves me a lot of work. Don't need to worry about replanting them every year or messing up my soil. Any change we have to work less is a welcome one. As Trotsky once said, man will occupy himself with re-registering mountains and rivers and will earnestly and repeatedly make improvements in nature. Okay. We're on our way, you guys. We're on our way. All right. Eastern Africa is lower middle now. Okay. A train filled with something? I don't know how to say that. Has derailed near your location. But you can't leave. You're an important planning professional. It's hard to hear the radio reports of disaster over white noise of your equipment, TV, tablet, and smartphone. Oh, no. Oh, no, that sucks. The experiment succeeded in drawing down carbon from the atmosphere, but it had an unintended side effect. The rotting algae formed an anoxic dead zone in the abyssal plains, killing much of the ocean life. We've improved efficiency in this process converted existing steel manufacturing facilities to use it. Okay, oh, we got SRM now. Some areas have experienced cooling, but with significant emissions abasement, SRM has ramped up to keep pace. Okay, so we can do that for our energy. Next turn. We ought to be able to shorten the work week while still maintaining high rates of production. Yay! Electrifying automobiles significantly decreased transport emissions. It did wonders for the air pollution, but at a high cost in electricity and lithium without doing anything to improve transportation access. But maybe you should reconsider the dominance of cars in our public infrastructure. Okay, Central Asia, abolish prisons. It's wrong to lock people up in cages. As a socialist society, we can do better than this. We don't put people in cages anymore, so why would we think it's okay for animals? I say good riddance to those horrendous institutions of suffering. And now cars are banned, okay? There has been a rapid decline in fatalities from car accidents, which were on the order of millions of deaths per year. Air quality is better, too. Why are you taking so many things away from me? Get over it. The high seas fishing ban has had benefits, but they have been limited since less than 10% of global fish catch was in the high seas. Maybe we ought to consider a blanket ban on industrial fishing. The ban on outdoor cats is going well. Wild to think how much dam damage these critters can do. Yeah, keep your cats inside, people. We've got a lot of extra graphics cards now. Not sure what to do with them. I guess we could recycle them. Yeah, I guess you could. Reducing energy consumption is an easy way to protect the grid and minimize environmental impact. These restrictions have been ridiculous. How can anyone survive on such a pathetic amount of energy? I've lived decently on less energy than this. I'm sure you'll get used to it. I'm sure I won't. I feel way less guilty about eating meat now, but it's gotten harder to find meat, which I'm not happy about. Slaughterhouse jobs have also gotten much less grim. A bigger cage is still a cage, and a death sentence is still a death sentence. Hey, well, I guess I'm socialist after all. Thank you, consumerists. Thank you, consumerists. <laughs> Bread and roses? Pfft. We demand Cartier and caviar. Socialism is for the working class, but it isn't about work. Just chill, comrade. Yeah, just chill, comrade. More crustaceans and pinnipeds have been spotted. I thought I would hate the inconvenience of not being able to fly, but who doesn't like trains? That's right, everyone loves trains. They're fun. A number of deep sea mining operations have sprouted up, opening up a steady supply of many important me uh, metals and minerals. My headphone's about to die. I gotta switch to the other one. It has, however, disrupted the lives of those living down there, and plumes of effluent have clouded large parts of the ocean. Maybe it's worth it. Okay, we're still plus on the political capital. We're doing great. We're doing great. Okay. All right, sixth planning session. Let's go. Okay, the accelerationists love me now. I feel like we're on the same wavelength. My party will join your coalition. I feel like they do that whenever you do luxury for all, no matter what, pretty much. Together, we can manifest a world of incredible material abundance and luxury for everyone. I already did that. I already did that. Okay, here we go. Let's see. We've got this. We've got BC. Yet. Okay, let's get rid of this. Okay, let's get rid of this. Um, we're going to do this. Okay, there we go. Yes, I know it increases the extinction rate. I know, I know, I know. All right, can we get rid of any of this petroleum? Put it into green hydrogen. Okay, increase energy use, increase. No, not really. He's back. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Because we're going to have all these policies coming. Okay. Is there anything we can make? happen faster that would be beneficial. Oh, mass electrification. Let's do that. That would be really helpful for the energy. Make it do 16 years. All right, because it's in five years, I just want to make see if there's any of these that we can make be less than five years. 
six. What about this one? Okay, that's five now. A carbon capture is going to come up next turn. Let's see. One year left, seven years left. Let's make that five years left. Yes, phase out commercial fishing. Phase out commercial fishing. Five years, one, one, four. Okay, what other policies might be worth it? Uh, yes, we're going to ban non-indigenous hunting. We're going to ban exotic animal trade. We're going to do degrowth. I like to do that one. And um, now that vegan's only three, we'll go vegan. All right, what about research? Is there anything that we can do? Okay, five years. But I don't care too much about that. That's fine. Long-range electric aviation. Let's make that happen faster. Let's make this one happen faster. Yeah, that's fine. Biosphere 3. Third generation biofuels. Let's do this. Biofabrication. We'll make this shorter. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's go. I know we've got brownouts, you guys. I know. All right. We're able to reduce emissions somewhat, but leaks and upstream emissions limited the overall amount. With the reforestation of Satoyama Forest, students and senior citizens work with farmers to plant rice and clear irrigation channels. We call ourselves the Matsutake Crusaders. Our co-op has been working together to condition the forest for Matsutake mushrooms to thrive again. They love their mushrooms, those eco-feminists. Adaptations like non- Tillage and cover crops make a notable difference in terms of carbon and water retention in soil. Deserts reflect more sunlight than bush, and the increased solar absorption has led to temperature increase. It's amazing that we can now diagnose specialized issues like species decline in a matter of minutes instead of years. Well, for example, our fish population had a sudden decline, and we found that it was due to cooler temperatures attracting more predators to the area. Oh no, we've got unrest. Some regions are really unhappy with their decisions. Protests are cropping up everywhere. Your plans have only brought us hardship. Just be patient, guys. Just be patient. Just be patient. I promise it's going to be fine. Here we go. You get public transit. You're happy now, right? The city air feels fresher somehow, you know? I guess less people are driving now that public transit is so convenient. Well, I'm all for public transit, even though I don't use it myself. And there's a new systems are clogging up the roads and making driving a pain. Planner, we told you to leave the earth-killing accelerationist behind, but you wouldn't listen. Now we're left with no other choice but to strike at the heart of grotesque industry. <laughs> I know, Lolly. I know, I know. <laughs> it's funny. It, I mean, because it's a game, there's like certain things that you can do that don't, um, that you shouldn't be able to do both of those things, but the game totally lets you. It took some time, but people have come around to seeing the low energy lifestyle doesn't mean giving up good quality of life. Okay, Northern Africa's upper, upper middle now, Western Africa's lower middle. Oh, we've got river restoration. Yes. By removing so many dams, rivers around the world have come back to life. Rewilding and river reforestation has not only decreased methane emissions and regulated steam flows, stream flows, but also decreased wildfire severity, thanks to beavers. Cases of CETO, I don't know how to say that, caused by parasitic worms have also fallen dramatically. That's great. We did it. We restored the rivers. Rotational grazing, if this doesn't really do much. Yeah, it doesn't really do much. You hear that? No more roaring and rattling of engines, the sputtering and belching of combustion, just the sweet hum of electricity, music to my ears. I was helping out with the local remediation projects when we were clearing out some invasive plants and were upsetting the local ecosystem. Turns out you can ferment them into some pretty nice refreshments. Now I'm seeing everyone volunteer at remediation sites to see what they can brew up. That sounds fun. Some fun wines. Esperanto. I don't know how to speak against Esperanto. <laughs> We've successfully integrated more renewable energy due to the smart grid's ability to respond to demand and reduce the chances of blackouts. Okay, I told you guys I would do something about that. It was a major effort, but it's worthwhile. AMR might kill tens of millions of people per year. It would be better if we addressed the causes of AMR by shrinking the industrial livestock industry and improving living standards among the global south. I've, I've done that. I've done that. We've done both. Quite a lot of people have made the move to the countryside. Organic and fossil-free agriculture requires more labor than industrial farming. Most people have reported it's an improvement to their quality of life. It's a lot quieter, and the fresh air has done wonders for me. The food waste campaign has been very successful. 
we have a reliable stream of extra organic material too. We could process this into biomaterials such as chitin from crab shells and streamline the process for larger scale production. Biodiversity in the oceans is bouncing back. We've seen recovery of old oyster beds and return of massive schools of cods and sardines. I can't believe people ever made a sport out of killing things. Glad we can finally get rid of that barbaric practice. But if you ask me, no one should be allowed to do it, no matter its cultural importance. But whether you agree or not, this is still a big improvement. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think you can actually ban hunting completely outright. Finally, this moment couldn't have come sooner. How does one define exotic? My family has bred betas for many years. Now we're forced into the black market. The successor of this initiative will depend on our ability to offer equitable alternative livelihoods for people who work in the wildlife trade. What are you doing? <laughs> You're supposed to make things better, not worse. It's about time that we recognize who, may, who the main perpetrators of all these crises are. This kind of regression isn't necessary. Shut up. It's beneficial. With the right technology and conditions, no one has to give up every, anything. We need to do both, okay? The last few years have been miserable. Sure, I get eating less meat, but banning it entirely? Can't we just figure out more sustainable, ethical ways to produce meat? This was long over, too. We're doing both, you guys. We're doing both. Look at all that green stuff at the top. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? Look at this. People are ecstatic. Biodiversity is recovering. The world is recovering. Parliament trusts you completely. 32 years left. Okay, let's see what other fun stuff we can do. Oh, de-extinction program. Yes, let's do that. Okay, we make it have nine years left. Okay, what else is in infrastructure? Global demilitarization. Fuck yes, let's do it. Dump in the points. Dump in the points. Okay. Let's see. What are their policies? We're not doing those policies. Do we need to fuck with our production at all? Probably not. Probably not at this point in the game. Probably makes no difference. Um, yeah. So I guess we can dump points into this to see if it can get finished. Seven years left. Okay. Come on. There you go. Oh, this already has all the points. Um, okay. All right. That's all. That's all we can do. <laughs> the algae farmers of Lake Chad and seaweed farmers of Jam uh, Jambiani have expanded their harvest and processing operation. They are now major exporters of food-grade algae and seaweed. For many generations, Kanembu women have passed from mother to daughter the traditional methods of harvesting spur spurlina. I don't know how to say that. From Lake um, Bodu and Daja in Chad to make dihe. I guess is how you say that. I probably said like all those words wrong. It's a press caked cake of that one thing sold in local markets and used as a sauce base, kind of like a curry brick. Oh, that sounds good. I would try that. These robots are okay. They still can't handle a lot of environmental conditions encountered on a farm, but they found some consistent uses. Nothing compared to my AI, but I have to man uh, manipulate delicate plants or tread through muddy soil. They kill a lot of bugs and other critters, but they freed up some time, so I'm happy about that. Okay, Northern Europe is upper middle. Australia is, yeah. So we, we brought them all down to upper middle. <laughs> oh, no, you're upper middle. Oh, no, boo-hoo. Uh, what have we done? Oh, no, I killed the porpoises. That sucks. We've shifted quite a lot of petroleum-based plastic to these new biofabrication methods, but even though we've used far less plastic than we did pre-revolution, the amount of biomass available still isn't enough to fully replace petroleum-based plastics. So we're at least introducing less new CO2 into the atmosphere by avoiding some fossil fuel usage. It was a fair bit of work, but everyone appreciates upgrading old housing stock. I myself love the calm science of passive houses. HVAC can be so noisy. All of the pipelines, pump stations, and wind farms have caused some, uh, some ecological distant uh, to polar regions. I'm not surprised. A copper mining operation opened near my town even after we voted against it. It's too close to us in our water supply and people are getting sick from it. Surely there can be better sites. How desperate are we for copper that we need to put people in harm's way? I thought this kind of thing was behind us. It is behind us. It is behind us. Sorry. A genetically altered strain of nanochloropus is able to produce a higher concentration of lipids for biofuel and butanol. We can now grow and deploy algae-based biofuels at scale. Yay. Um, we were never able to overcome the reprocessing and fuel fabrication balance challenges. It's time to throw in the towel. Yeah, this fast breeder reactor doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. 
Our experiments were beset by disaster upon disaster. We weren't able to create a fully closed ecology, but we learned a lot. We weren't able to find refrigerants that checked off all the boxes. Some had health and safety risks, some were less efficient, some had further environmental issues or were themselves potent greenhouse gases. Though funnily enough, we settled on R744, carbon dioxide, as a natural refrigerant. It's not the most efficient, though. Well, this is an upsetting milestone. Ocean plastic weighs more than fish. We still rely too heavily on fossil fuels and plastics. I know. I know we do. The rapid circulation of goods dropped after the revolution, but ocean sipping is still a major activity. I'm happy to see it's a bit better for the planet now. I've packed up and left the city some time ago. The re-ruralization program has started. I'd never see myself living in the country, but in a tough time, I thought a fresh start might do me good. I love it. Hikes through the forest, volunteering on local farms, having time to swim and read. That does sound really nice. Oh, next-gen solar. The new generation of photovoltaic cells have an astounding efficiency performance. It makes all sorts of applications feasible now. Okay, plus 107. Fantastic. All right, biodiversity is recovering. All right, so if you do well enough, you don't make it all the way to the end of the game, and this is what happens. So we're on the eighth planning session. We still have 27 years left in our tender tenure, but um, look at this. I can't believe it, but looking at all the numbers, we've done it. This is probably the first time in centuries that we can confidently say we're leaving a better planet for future generations. We've undone so much of the century's damage on people and the planet and have a stronger foundation to continue improving. You step back from your planning console and let out a sigh, the weight of decades-long career shedding from your shoulders. You manage to last all this time, but how has everyone else fared? So many unpopular and damaging decisions. Were they necessary, or did you fumble your way through them? You can't help but wonder how things could have gone differently. That dialogue doesn't change no matter what you do. There is no, like, best um, outcome. Uh, that's just encouraging you to play the game again, because different combinations can win. Was this the only way? Well played. Me and the accelerationists ushered a world into the, to a prosperous future. The accelerationists like me the most, I guess. Um, I think that's what this says. And so I've gotten planetary life flourished under your tenure. You helped electrify the world. You kept on using fossil fuels. Renewables dominated energy production. Global diets shifted towards vegan. And then you can try again. So that's how you play this game. Once you kind of learn how to balance out the um, fossil fuel, like the energy and the, the fuels and stuff, um, you can do lots of different combinations to actually win. So what I showed was kind of like an easy way, but there are others. Like despite what the Steam reviews say, you can totally win by being fully capitalist, okay? You can like really prioritize the consumerist and accelerationist and still win. Like it's still possible because you can do like all the things. And remember, in addition to balancing your fuels and your energy, okay, the other really important thing to know is that curriculums are cheap and people love them. People love learning about the different ideologies that are that are in their government. They love it and they're cheap, okay? So uh, those are really important too. Okay, you guys, so that was Half Earth Socialism. I really wanted to show that game, so I wanted to stream a little bit longer so that you guys could see that. So I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. We're gonna do our outro again. We're gonna do our outro again for YouTube, okay? All right, you guys, so. Where can you find me? You can find me right here. We stream on Saturdays and on Sundays starting at noon Eastern. All of my VODs get posted to YouTube so you can see all of the previous episodes there. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter uh, from now until um, Airmine Muskox uh, destroys it, whenever that is, <laughs> to see all the latest updates. You can also join my Discord server um, to hang out with me. And that is also the best place to get notifications for my stream because I control those notifications, okay? Um, if you would like to support me, here's all the ways. Here's all the ways you can subscribe right here on Twitch. You can do, um, you can go look at my merch shop that's on Etsy. You can, uh, you can donate if you would like to. Um, also, I do have a throne wish list. And last, uh, last but not least, I just want to plug this real quick. Um, I'm trying to post to my TikTok a bit more, mostly because I'm nervous that uh, Elon Muskrat is is going to kill, going to kill Twitter. So yeah. Um, anyway, I've got a, I've got a TikTok. You should go look at the slime video right here, in particular. You should go, you should go watch that on my TikTok. Oh my gosh, focus camera. Anyway, here it is. It's Karen Terry. There you go. Let's find someone to raid, you guys. Let's find someone to raid. I want to see. I want to see who in the who in the raid train is live. Let's go see. Go see who's live. Let's see. Oh, Demon Fighters, who was in here earlier and said hi, is live. I think. They came and said hi. Maybe that was yesterday. I don't remember. They came and said hi to me recently. 
Let's see um, if they are still live. Okay, they are still live. They are still live. Oh, oh, and they're doing a, a charity for a wounded warrior. Okay, yes, we definitely want to raid them. Um, wounded warrior, by the way, is not without problems, but overall, they're trying, you know. And uh, and our our soldiers, after they come back from their service, don't get a lot of support, and they need more of it. Okay, all right, we're gonna raid into demon fighters. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.